idea for a project that's been itching my brain all month and I've got about a week left to execute it. So I need to figure out how to splice and solder this kind of light filament, better known as EL wire. Let's figure out how to do that. Yeah, people sew this stuff to clothes all the time. They put it in car interiors and things like that. It has a lot of like aesthetic uses, but let's talk about its anatomy. The first outer layer is the tinted plastic sheath and it's what basically colors your light. When you strip that away, there is another coating and this is what they call the phosphor coating. When you strip away that, you have to be very careful. You can see when the light just hits them. There's two very thin conductors and a copper core in the middle. The copper core is often coated in something so you'll have to take advantage of a sharp blade and kind of strip that coating. But when soldering, your power supply or AC inverter, whatever ends up coming with your light strip, it has two cables. One of these cables will get soldered to the copper core and the other cable will get soldered to these two thin conductors or angel wires. As you saw before, they're quite thin, so good luck trying to solder to that. And you also have to be very careful not to short the two. So this will be my first time trying to solder two pieces together. Let's see if it'll work. When splicing and soldering your EL wire, some tools you can expect to need are some wire strippers, wire cutters, probably an X-Acto knife or some kind of blade to kind of remove coating off of the copper element on top of, you know, your soldering iron, your typical solder and heat shrink tubing to cover your joints. Oh, there we go. So I stripped the plastic coating, I stripped the phosphor coating, and now we can see the two thin conductors. And now we need to use the knife and remove the coating on this copper core. Tuck the thin conductors away so I don't accidentally cut them. You can see how it's now shiny. It had this white coating on it before and now it's shiny. So I cut this other smaller piece off and I did the same exact thing. What I want to do is solder them together and then turn the light on to see if the short piece still lights up. This will be a maneuver for sure. It's probably a good idea to use some helping hands to kind of hold everything in place while you solder. I will start probably by soldering the center core because it's a little bit easier. Now I am twisting these thin conductors so that I can solder to them. This is just a preliminary test to make sure I'm soldering the right things together. Okay, that's literally the worst solder job I've ever done, but hopefully it proves our point. One of the angel wires did just fall off, so if it doesn't work or if it's a lot weaker, that could be why. I'll try plugging it in and seeing if anything blows up. Oh, it works, nice. So it turns out you don't actually need to solder to both of the thin conductors, you know? How I showed earlier, there's two. On the short piece, one of them just fell off, so I soldered to only one of it, and it works. It works well, actually. It doesn't look any different in terms of brightness. That's how you solder two pieces of EL wire together. And had I known this last year, I could have fixed my project that broke. Even the blinking works. And obviously if you short these two together, it's going to stop working. If you're planning on putting this on a project, I wouldn't keep it as is because your joints can break or you could short the connections. Before soldering, thread on some heat shrink tubing to cover this joint and this joint separately. Surprisingly, the first test actually worked. Here we go, a spliced EL wire. Definitely some of my finest soldering work. Stay tuned for what I make with this light.